the biggest entrepreneur platform on the planet. This is Business Rockstars. I'm Brittany Whitney, and this is Business Rockstars. My guest today is Dr. Terry Levine best-selling author, business consultant, executive coach expert, and founder of Heartpreneur LLC. Dr. Terry Levine, thank you so much for joining us today. So tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Um, where, where did you start and how did you get to where you are today? So I started as a speech language pathologist. That's what my first degree was in, my master's degree. I decided to open my own speech clinic, knowing nothing about business sales or marketing. Um, I got successful at that, sold that business. Then I started a whole art show business, sold that. Then I started a healthcare business and on and on until being in the consulting industry now, which is where I feel at home for the past 27 years. But I made one like diversion and I took a job as a, a CEO in a corporation, which I think we can talk about a little bit later. It'd be interesting. So you've kind of done it all. <laughs> um, tell our audience, what are you currently doing? Uh, thanks for asking. So I am a business consultant. I work with entrepreneurs, primarily women, and I help them come up with their business idea, whatever they're passionate about, create their business, structure their business, get a conveyor belt of qualified prospects and grow their businesses without sales marketing or advertising, getting to do relationship building heart to heart. That's amazing. And um, you also have a book kind of specifically for female entrepreneurs. Um, tell us some of the key takeaway lessons that entrepreneurs can learn from reading your book. So the book is Turbocharge Your Business for Women Entrepreneurs. And I, I wrote the book because I've worked with about 6,000 entrepreneurs and women do business differently. And yet so many of us are being taught in a male world how to do business and pitching and manipulating. Well, women have this advantage. We, we're just heart to heart. That's how we are. We have more emotional intelligence. And I said, I'm going to write this book and teach women how to do business being who they are, not learning all the male way to do business, which is not all that functional. And then within the book, I use actual clients and their case studies. So you'll find different women that you can relate to exactly how they built their successful business. And you can follow in their footsteps and do the same thing. So what are some of the ways that women do business? Like, how does it differentiate from the way men do business? So men do business by what I, what I call hunting. I'm going to hunt for a client. I'm going to hunt in a networking group. I'm going to go pitch you on LinkedIn or whatever. And they come in kind of an aggressive way, um, typically not to just now. They don't listen as well. And they just have a different kind of emotional intelligence. That is biological. That's just the way that it is. Our brains are not the same. Women, on the other hand, make really good listeners. They have high emotional intelligence and they can build relationships. They don't go in networking group going, who could I pitch? Who could I shove a business card? They go seeking friendships. And that's the way that I've really disrupted businesses with Heartrepreneur is teaching women and a lot of very evolved men, how do you do business heart to heart and stop doing business where you're coming at people and pitching them, which really is turning them off and making them back away. So let's say you're in a boardroom, you're well, women, and you're in a boardroom and you're pitching to five or six men. How do you kind of adapt? Do you have to adapt your style of how, you know, you go into the room or what are some tips for women? Because that's often a lot of the times, right? Like women are pitching to a room full of men. Yes. So I recommend that you have what I call behavioral flexibility, which means you also understand how males think and perform and how their brain is different. Typically, men like information. Give me the facts. Give me the... And women, we love to speak and tell the story. So you adapt and have behavioral flexibility in that way. So if I'll give you an example. If I'm with a group of women and I'm presenting, 
I'm going to be about relationships and find out about them and their families and their hobbies. If I'm with men, I'm going to say, I know we only have a limited period of time and our goal here today is to accomplish. So I change the behavioral flexibility. What I don't change is who I am organically, a woman. Mm -hmm. I listen. I use my emotional intelligence. I do speak in feeling words because that is how a woman speaks. And so I don't shift that. I just shift the behavioral style. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you've worked with more than 5,000 business owners, male and female. Um, what is one of the biggest mistakes you commonly see entrepreneurs make? And what kind of tips do you have? Love this question, first of all. Um, the biggest thing that I see is people try to do it alone. They go out and they want to be an entrepreneur and they're guessing and they're, they're going to pay for their mistakes. There's, there's a lot of money to lose in the mistakes they make. They really need to have a mentor nurture them and guide them and take them under their wing. So a coach, a consultant, a strategist, an advisor, um, someone who's been there. Now for women, I see this a lot. They come to me after hiring more than one, usually male strategist or consultant with all these male tactics that don't make them feel well. So that's another thing, resonate with whoever you bring on to help you. The other thing, and this is big, is they waste a ton of money. They're doing a lot of marketing and selling in a male way, and whether they're male or female, and that's not very effective today. And the last thing is wasting hours and hours of their day on social media, not knowing you can go in and out for 20 minutes and you can get a conveyor belt of qualified prospects if you do it right. So those are my tips. And what is doing it in the right way versus the wrong way on social media, for example? So I'll teach by example. So I have a group on Facebook called Heartrepreneurs with Terry Levine. I go into that group and deliver high value, high content. I educate, I help, I serve. It takes me about 20 minutes to do that and one other thing. And the other thing is I belong to two Facebook groups where I'm active. Those groups have my exact target audience. I don't go in there hunting and pitching. I contribute value. I answer people's questions. And once in a while I post and then people raise their hands. I call it reverse marketing and they come to me. They find me, they email me, they message me, they come to my website, they join my Facebook group and we start building a relationship. And that is how women do business, heart to heart relationships. And that's such good advice too, because I think a lot of times people think, let me just throw a bunch of stuff on the wall, see what sticks. Exactly. But if you're coming to people with informative, educational content, they'll naturally come to you. It's so simple, but <laughs> I think a lot of people just, you know, think the more they throw against the wall, the better it is. Yeah. Um, Can I just piggyback on that? Because what yeah. you said was really, really important. Um, this throwing things against the wall seems to be very common. <laughs> and that's fine if you're, you know, my mother had taught me to cook spaghetti and you throw it on the wall and it sticks, it's al dente, it's done. It doesn't work in business and it's going to slow you down and you're going to spend a lot of money doing the wrong things. So I recommend an entrepreneur start doing the right things immediately. Start working with someone, whoever that is for you, who can help you. And I kind of want to go back to the early days of your career, because um, I'm sure you made mistakes, right? Every entrepreneur does. Um, what was kind of one of the biggest mistakes you made that sticks out in your memory? And how did you learn from it and pivot? So come out of college, I know nothing about business sales, marketing. I knew how to be a speech pathologist. That's it. So I opened a speech clinic. And I guess I thought, well, I built it, they'll just come, right? And I have a lot of expenses and my husband and I have college loans. Now I have overhead and I have zero income. No one is coming. It's not like I build it and they'll come. And I realized I had to figure out some way of building relationships with people in the community, with the doctors, with schools, with nursing homes, with preschools. And once I realized that, and it wasn't, for months, honestly, I sat there for months with like one patient, two patients. I found ways to create value for doctors, for schools, for daycare centers. And I just kept being value, value, value. And all of a sudden, my clinic got extremely busy. And at some point, my clinic, you know, this is back in like 
the 1970s. Yeah. <laughs> my clinic reached a million dollar level. Now, a million dollars was a lot of money back then. Absolutely. And I, I did it just by building relationships. So you don't build it and they come. You have to go do something. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's a great takeaway for any entrepreneur is just because you have this idea or just because you've opened your doors to your shop, you know, there's so much back work that needs to be done before you make that first dollar or get that first client. Exactly. Exactly. So make sure that you don't have that, you know, field of dreams mentality. It could be your passion. It could be the greatest thing that you develop you have to actually build relationships to get the engine going and then maintain relationships for the life of your business. Absolutely. Um, I read that the coaching industry is a $15 billion industry, which is huge. Um, obviously not every business coach feels authentic, nor are they successful. Um, what have you done as a business coach to make sure that you have integrity and authenticity to your clients? Well, now you're talking my language. So <laughs> my company is called Heartrepreneur, and that actually stands for authenticity, integrity, and transparency. So what I've really seen over the years is people not doing business that way. Listen, I've paid a lot of money to a lot of people out there, marketing experts and other people who either weren't authentic or were teaching me to do and say things that I literally would feel like if I said that, I'd have to come home and take a shower. Like it just yeah. doesn't feel clean. So what's really important is, again, doing business heart to heart. I listen to someone. I don't know if I can help them. I have no idea. So I listen to them and I say, can I help them? And if I can help them, I actually extend a better than risk-free guarantee because I believe you should stand behind what you do. And I say, look, if what I do and my process doesn't work, you've got to work the process. If it doesn't work, I'll give you all your money back plus $5,000 in cash. And I really believe, you know, I'm taking all the risks. I believe that I know who I can help and I'm authentic in saying yes, you, and no, I can't help you. Let me refer you or recommend something else. To me, it is absolutely important to be authentic, transparent, and in integrity as a coach, as a consultant, really any entrepreneur. That's really great. What if someone comes to you, like walk me through the process. Let's say someone comes to you, they tell you about your business, you think you can help them. What are kind of the next steps on your end? So this is an important process for us. Um, we're not sure that we can help someone. We don't want to waste their time or waste my team's time. Yeah. So we have an application. And so first they fill out an application and we look at it as a team and say, do we think that this is somebody we could help? Because otherwise we're not going to even schedule a conversation. Mm -hmm. We think we can help them. We do a 15 minute interview. And on that interview, it's not a sales pitch. It's us listening, typically my team. Where are they? They're here. Where do they want to go? Is that a place that Terry's program could take them? If the answer is yes, we schedule 45 minutes to really dive in into their business. We give them help, we give them advice, and we really see them, very simple question at the end, would you like help implementing the strategies we gave you? If it's a no, they go on their way, we wish them the best of luck and we part as friends. And if it's a yes, they potentially can be invited into my program. That's great. And um, lead generation is so important for every startup and business owner, obviously. <laughs> um, what are your tips and tricks for business owners to find new customers besides having authentic conversations and kind of teaching them how to talk to their customer? So when I make this statement, I'm going to ask your audience not to fight me and just let me make the statement and try it on like it's a tight pair of jeans and wear it around. <laughs> Your audience is on Facebook. Even if you don't think your audience is there, I've worked with about 6,000 people and some of them fight me in the beginning, like your audience is on Facebook. There are more people on Facebook than all the social media platforms combined. Wow. And here's the real key. The average person spends 30 minutes a day on Facebook and on the other platforms, three minutes a day. Wow. Okay. So you have an engaged audience. Stop hunting on all these other platforms. Even if you don't think they're there, they're friends, they're family, they're there, okay? So 
you don't even need to build an email list. I have clients that have no email list. They have no website. They go to Facebook, they start a group, they follow kind of my model of the group that I have. And then they join two or three groups where their exact audience is and they create value. And what happens is, again, it's reverse marketing. Some people in the group raise their hand. They ask questions. How do I get to work with you? Do you know the answer to this question? They message you. They look you up. They follow you. Believe me, they find you. And the reverse marketing gives you a conveyor belt. I mean conveyor belt of qualified prospects every day. We and our client family members have people that reach out and say, how do I get to work with you? And that's what happens. So are you putting paid money behind that or is it, I, I don't want to give all of your secret sauce away, but, but are you, are you starting with paid or how does that work? Zero. It's all organic. So this is uh, my seventh year in the, the group strategy and each year just from our group and by me creating value, nothing else, not pitching in there. We've done about a million dollars of our revenue right from the group. Okay, and it is organic. It's me just creating value and giving away templates and checklists. And Tuesdays, every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, I do a free master class in there and I engage, I answer questions. And so people literally just under the comments, they raise their hands like, Are you taking new clients? Or how do I get to work with you? Or how do I get this question answered? That's the whole strategy. And my client family members duplicate that and they literally get the same results. So absolutely save your money. You don't need to spend money on marketing or advertising. So if someone comes to you and they have an idea and that's it, right? What are kind of the next steps that you tell them? Like, what's the next step? Do you want them to create a pitch deck? Do you want them to have a working website? Let's say someone's listening to this and they have this amazing idea. They just don't know the next step to take. So I'm going to say, if you have an idea, it might be an idea that nobody else is interested in. I hate to burst people's bubble. I like to be honest. So the first thing you do is you go to Facebook, you ask friends, family, groups, everywhere you can, what they think of this idea. So it might be, hey, I have this idea on, you know, how to grow your hair. And I have this product I really think is going to work. If I bring it to market, are you interested in it? And if you get crickets, then move on, okay? Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, something that people really don't want. So if you have an idea of an actual client, she has an idea of something she wants to do with her business around workshops on mindset. I had her do this in Facebook. She had over 600 women respond saying they'd be very interested in her course. Now we have evidence. Now we have potential buyers. Then I have her create, and it, it is outlined in Turbocharge Your Business for Women Entrepreneurs. I have her outline what's called a core unique positioning statement. It's not an elevator pitch. I teach it in the book. Mm -hmm. From there, she creates a consumer awareness guide. And those two things are all she needs. And then we start offering her program. And you can do this literally in a matter of 14 days. That's great advice. Because I think a lot of times, so many entrepreneurs, they first of all, they keep their idea secret because they're scared someone's going to poach it and then start their business. Sure. Um, but I think entrepreneurs need to realize to have an open line of communication to first even see if anyone wants, <laughs> wants your business and then go from there instead of wasting so much time and money, you know, creating a website, hiring someone for your social media. I think just see what people think. Yeah. I had someone come to me, I think it was in uh, the summer, a few months back, and her name is Eileen, and she came to me and she had this idea. And I said, I have no idea. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not your audience. Let's put it out there. Well, she got nothing, no, no response, no whatever. And she wouldn't go with my advice of let it alone. So she kept trying for months. She wasted so much money, so much time. And she came back to me and said, let's forget that idea. Can you help me? And we literally lost months and it started all over again. She's successful now, but you have to make sure that you test your idea. If there isn't an audience that's already seeking it, you're going to spend years educating the audience as to why they need or want this. And that's not a very good way to start a business or to have income flowing in. That's so true. Um, being a founder and entrepreneur, as you know, can often be a roller coaster of emotions. Um, what advice do you have for someone who's kind of stuck in a rut or they're at the bottom of the roller coaster 
and how do they kind of ignite that passion and work their way up again? Interesting question. So I've only been at the bottom of the roller coaster once in this 43 year journey. And it was suddenly when I got a neurological disease called reflex sympathetic dystrophy. Mm -hmm. And the disease took me out of the ability to work because I was getting ketamine infusions, which is elephant tranquilizer, and I was hallucinating. Um, so obviously I wasn't going to be working with clients and I was also in bed for over 18 months wow. and my business continued to flourish because I had set up systems and it was a company versus me just working and trading right. time for money. Um, what happened for me is I got myself back in action at the bottom of you, as you call it a roller coaster by just using my mindset and saying, stop the pity party, start being grateful. There's a reason that I got this disease versus someone else. And the disease is kind of an orphan disease without a lot of funding. I speak on stages, I write books, I have a loud voice, I have a big following. Oh, I turned it around after 18 months though. I got the disease as a blessing. I started a foundation for kids. I took the focus off of myself and that changed everything. So no matter what that is that brings you down, it's always using your mindset, in my view, to get back up. That's so inspirational. And I think that's great advice. Do you have like daily mantras or kind of how did you slowly climb that roller coaster again? Because I'm sure you didn't just wake up one day and go, oh, you know, <laughs> I'm positive today. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, I was really low. I mean, I was, it was beyond a pity party. Like I really didn't want to be on the planet. I was in so much excruciating pain and I created a process and I call it G I D G I D G stands for gratitude. I stands for intentions and D stands for delegations. And it's, it's outlined in a lot of depth in one of the chapters in the book. So it works like this. And this is how I changed everything. I wake up in the morning and I take a journal before I put my feet on the floor and get out of bed. And I say, what am I grateful for? Could be that I'm waking up, that the sun is out, anything. My bed is comfortable, whatever. And I would write that down. Then I would say, what are my intentions? And intentions aren't to do's. They are, how do I choose to feel and experience the day? So this morning, one of mine was I choose to feel connection. Another one was I choose to laugh. Another one was I intend to love. So I have some intentions that I carry through the day. D is delegations. And that's not going, you know, here, Mary or Joe, go do this. It's saying to the universe, I don't know how. I really don't. I'm going to trust that you do. I'm delegating this, whatever it is to you. So in my case, I'm delegating that somehow I can live my life without all this pain, figure it out universe. So GID, I still do it every single day. That's great advice. Um, and a really inspirational story. What advice do you have for men who, because hopefully in the future, right, there will be a boardroom full of women. And I think it's slowly heading in that direction. What advice do you have for men who are pitching to a room full of women? How can they kind of, you know, speak, speak our language? <laughs> That's a really good question. It was really interesting to me. I was reading, uh, I think it was on Amazon. I was reading a review of Turbo Charger Business for Women Entrepreneurs, and it was a male who wrote it. And I thought, this is interesting. And he said, this book literally helped me have conversations. And he said, in the boardroom and in the bedroom, because oh. I didn't understand how a woman thinks and how her brain operates. Uh, one of my clients recently said he, is, he had bought the book for his wife. And after she read it, she said to him, you got to read this, Ken. <laughs> yeah. And he said, Three, I learned so much from the book because I didn't realize how women think and how they speak. And sometimes he said, I would be pitching a room full of women. And now I realize I did everything the wrong way, everything to turn them off. So I, I recommend that as a male, you learn just like behavioral flexibility. I've learned how men think and speak, learn how women speak and think, and it'll be better for your relationships as well. That's great advice. And where can people purchase your book? Where can people learn more about you? So they can definitely get the book on, you know, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. The book is available there. Um, definitely join our Facebook group, Heartrepreneurs with Carrie Levine. Not only is there a lot of content and value 
If you're going to start a group, I always tell people just model what I do because it works. And I have one other thing that I give away, and that is a free masterclass so you can learn how to get a conveyor belt of qualified prospects. And that's at TL, my initials, Terry Levine, TLwebinar.com. Well, Terry, thank you so much for joining us today. It was really a pleasure speaking with you, your wealth of knowledge, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.